My talk is titled, Out with the Ford, In with the Fiat, Rethinking Leadership. I have two objectives with this discussion. One is my objective to inspire you, inspire you to be creative, innovative, to think outside the box, or as I would like to refer to my own style of thinking as abnormal. Why is this? Well, we don't all have to be the same. Uh, we don't all have to earn a university degree. We don't have to marry somebody of the opposite sex. We don't have to go to work in our cubicle. Uh, we don't have to buy a home in the suburbs. We don't have to have two children with a dog and then have those cute matching stickers along the back of the SUV. <laughs> we don't have to have that. Also, it's my objective to inspire you to as a manager or as an employee or a business owner, uh, to empower your employees or even empower the customer. Uh, by doing so, by giving them the opportunity to be involved and to participate, they take more ownership. I would like to begin with Henry Ford. Uh, he is the founder of the Ford Motor Company. He also helped usher in uh, the Industrial Revolution and he is well known for transactional leadership. Transactional leadership involves members' contributions in exchange for rewards. So the manufacturing line is an excellent example of this. Uh, the individuals were hired to build cars, specifically to how he designed them at the rate in which he wanted them to be produced. And you were paid at the end of the day. This was all in exchange for salary. You reached the status quo, you were paid, you were rewarded. I also had the same mentality with this customer. He is known for saying about 100 years ago, he was quoted as saying, our customers can have any color vehicle they would like as long as it's black. <laughs> so, there are some new schools of thought, and amongst them is this new concept of servant leadership. This is where you, as the business owner or the manager, uh, you use this process of eliminating obstacles, providing your employees with tools such as knowledge and skills. And you provide them this to empower these individuals to achieve your company's goals and objectives. Uh, another new concept that's been used more often is something known as change management. That's where we are adopting new concepts and behavior for the organization to produce significant modifications within the culture, the structure, the technologies being used, or the various products and services that we are producing. And then the last is participative management. This is establishing a workplace as a community. This is based on trust, more employee involvement, and less managerial control. So with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce you to some comparisons and then some specific examples of what is happening within the various industries today. So, this top photograph here, this is illustrating some employee, or one of the employees at Ford designing a new car. Now, I want you to look when you go outside after today. Almost everybody is driving around a black, white, or gray car, or truck, or SUV. Now, what's interesting, it was published in the New York Times in 2012 that the automotive industry, or our big three here, thought strategically we can reduce the cost of manufacturing and by reducing the cost of manufacturing, we'll give our customers three choices, black, white, or gray, gunmetal gray, charcoal gray, that shiny version of gray is silver. <laughs> but they were able to reduce manufacturing significantly, and so thus improving revenue. Uh, so it does create some limitations for the employees. Uh, in comparison, the Fiat company, uh, in Fiat Motor Company in Italy, uh, a couple of months after reading that article, they began a new campaign called Color Therapy. And what management did is they said, you, as a customer owning a vehicle, what do you want? Well, they said, we wanted color. So they decided to offer any color besides black or white. <laughs> any color that you want as a customer. So with that, you have more participation. Let's make this decision together. Let's make a change together. Uh, to Continue some comparisons. We've come quite familiar with these technology companies. Uh, not only Google and Apple on the forefront, they've created these campuses where you have dinings paid for the employees, they have playrooms, recreation areas, et cetera, et cetera. 
and other competitors, Google to Yahoo or Apple to Microsoft, there's a significant difference. One is in employee satisfaction. It's much lower. It's been reported to be much lower at Yahoo and at Microsoft, but they also struggle against their competitors. In general, when I looked yesterday, I do believe the stock for Google is about $830 per share compared to the about $28 for Yahoo. Apple was at about $430 yesterday compared to the about $20 to $30 for Microsoft. Now, by having this change management, creating this culture within the company that's unique, and then also empowering them, having these individuals, they not only design the products, but they market the products, they sell the products, they are very involved, the employees. And we don't only see this within the technology industry, we're seeing it more and more elsewhere. Uh, the Boost Juice Company, this is a company in Australia. Uh, they had a similar mentality as the Starbucks Corporation long ago, where regardless if you're part-time, full-time, you had benefits. Well, they have a national health care system there, but she wanted to hire people and take care of her employees. So the employees there, regardless of part-time, full-time, they have enhanced medical benefits, they have dental benefits, and the more time they commit to working within the organization, such as being almost full-time, they have tuition reimbursement. So it's a different mentality. They draw these people in, and they're known as boosties, and they are quite fun, but quite cr crazy at work. So everything from them deciding what music they will play while they're there, the customers can listen to and enjoy, she is also giving them power within their lives to make decisions career-wise. Ah, Chris Hughes. Does anybody know who Chris Hughes is? He's that third man in the dorm room in the social network. He's a background. We all know who Mark Zuckerberg is. Well, he actually was one of the individuals who helped found Facebook. And what's interesting, he was with the company for about five years, but he wanted to move on to bigger and better things in life. And he just recently became the majority owner of the, the New Republic magazine. It's a publication. It's nearly 100 years old. Uh, these individuals that originally owned the company decided to give him the majority control because they want to survive into the future. He is a technology genius. They figured he could help them be a company 20, 30, 40 years from now. So they not only brought him in to redesign the magazine itself, and he hired back in one of their award-winning editors, hired in a gentleman who's been working with in the music industry for some time to reproduce the magazine itself and the design, and also to help him with the platform that will be uh, available online. Yeah, the third guy in the room never gets credit, does he? Ah. Red Frog Events. Uh, this is an event management company. You might have heard of the Warrior Dash. Uh, they have this place here. It's not a corporate office. It's known as the Lily Pad. Here at the Lily Pad, the employees have free beverages throughout the entire facility, such as water, Red Bull, and yes, they provide beer to them. <laughs> not only do they have that, but everything throughout the entire spectrum, including at the five-year mark working for the corporation, they have to take a mandatory sabbatical. 30 days paid by the company out of the country. You must travel outside of the country, and you can bring a guest. So needless to say, the people love working here, and they want to dedicate 60, 80 hours nonstop. Uh, the one day I had an opportunity to go and visit with them, they, the, uh, the man who owns the company said, oh, everybody come in at about 12 noon tomorrow. We're going to go play some paintball, and after that, we'll go have some sushi. And not only did they have sushi for dinner, but they actually had to learn how to make the sushi. So that's what team building is to them. Ah, Mr. Jim, or Jim Good, Goodnight, he's the owner of SAS Software Company. And back in the 1970s, he's actually one who began this entire campus mentality. He transitioned his headquarters into a place that not only has a medical doctor on site, the dentist is also there, they have a daycare center, in addition to an automotive department there so he can help alleviate the day-to-day -day stresses for his employees. And this all began, and he's also known as the M&M &M Man, with him walking around throughout the company, just having chats with his employees, and he started bringing him snacks. He loved M&Ms. He was sharing that with everybody. To the point now, when you are going through your orientation, you have to list your favorite color M&M, and he purchases that color for you, and it's on your desk every day that you are at work. Okay, Ricardo Simler, he's a businessman down in Brazil. It's Simcoe's, the company. What I really wanted to emphasize with him, uh, he is the perfect example of participative management. Uh, with him, 
There are 1,400 total people who work for the company, and he has one vote, and they have one vote on all decisions. He is one of 1,400 people, so he can be outvoted 1,399 to one. He also lets them set their own hours, their own salaries, and they was one asked him, aren't you worried that maybe your company will go bankrupt one day? He said, no, I trust them, because if they do anything to harm the company, they can't work here. I have many other examples, but I'm going to share this one example for you because I have a special summary, a special ending for you. Uh, Lululemon Corporation up in Vancouver, Canada, they have a philosophy in which they only hire their customers. They figure who best to actually say, I'm an athletic, this is what I want to wear, it would be comfortable, it would be stylish, and who better to understand the customer's mentality to develop the marketing campaigns. So it is quite brilliant because they do think outside of the box. Okay. One more example here for you. Uh, Mr. Ken, or Jack, sorry, Jack Dorsey, founder of Twitter. Uh, that's the president of the United States, Barack Obama. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Rahm Emanuel has been with Bill Clinton. He's been with uh, Barack Obama. He helped them. He's the one who said, Bill Clinton, you, you need to be on MTV and play your saxophone. And Barack, you need to be out there more on, uh, on the internet and social media. So opposed to having a town hall meeting in a setting like this, they said, let's use Twitter. So anybody at any time can ask you a question and you can answer it to them. And they broadcast that via television and via the internet. Oh, one more, corporate social responsibility. Uh, this is Blake, he owns the Tom's company. They have what they call one for one. For every shoe as a customer that you purchase, they take another pair of shoes to a third world country and the employees are the ones who develop that program. So if all goes well, the music will start soon. So I want you to think differently when you walk out of here today.